Hey everybody, this is Bandor from PBR Materials and Debauchery Furniture. So, as some of you know, I've been producing some PBR materials lately and putting them out on the market for people to get, and I've been really promoting PBR and the usage of it. Um, get a bunch of questions from people about how it how it works and why my metallic um, PBR materials don't look so shiny and they don't look so metallic, things like that. So it's just some general educational. Things. So I thought I'd do a quick video to show you what um, what you can do with a PBR material when you put it on something and how you can change the way it looks and how you can make it look more or less uh, metallic or shiny or glossy or whatever uh, with some of the parameters. So when you get a material from whatever vendor you get it from, um, you go with the way that they have it set up when they save it uh, by default. But you can go in and uh, make changes to it and adjust it. Um, on the fly, just like you can with stuff today, with uh, the older textures, you could go in and make some changes to like the settings for uh, how shiny something is, for example, with the specular. Right? So you can do the same kind of things with this. So here we have just a basic sphere. I'm going to drop on some of uh, my materials. So these are the materials from my set, and it's the same for everybody's. So let's go ahead and take, um, let's do this uh, blue chrome. So there I just put the, it's called Deb PBR Metal Blue Chrome on the sphere. And you can see it looks kind of um, not that shiny. It's kind of dull. It's like uh, a little rough looking. I don't know how you would describe it, but it's not super shiny, right? Like chrome, you, chrome, you expect chrome to be really, really shiny, right? Well, I'm going to show you how you can make it that way. You just edit it. And then this is this only has one face, so you don't have to select the face. But uh, in your editor window, uh, under texture, you have the material here, and they've changed this a little bit. And, and depending on the viewer that you have, it's going to say different things in here. Um, I think on the SL viewer it says blend fong for the textures, which is the old way of doing things. You want to switch this to PBR, and in Firestorm, which is what I'm using, it says PBR metallic roughness. Now I can adjust the settings for my PBR material, which are on here, and you do that by clicking. Notice that the preview doesn't work, right? So you hit Edit, and you get this panel that pops up. And these are the different materials that are inside the PBR material. You have your base color, which is similar to a diffuse texture. You have a normal, oh sorry, this is a metallic roughness, an emissive, and a normal. Normal's down here. The normal, from what I can tell, the normal's the same. It hasn't really changed. The, the, there's no specular. And the metallic roughness kind of does similar things to what specular was intended to do, but it, it's way better. And there's two parameters associated with that. There's a metallic factor and a roughness factor, and you can adjust those. And that's what we're going to do. Emissive I'm not using on this one, but emissive is like uh, to glow or to, to cast a kind of light. You can, you can use an emissive texture and a, a tint for that. Um, if I wanted to apply a tint to a material... I can do it up here by changing this, and it's just like applying a, and just like the color tinting that you have with the regular textures, you just come in here and pick a color you want. You could use the presets, or you can go in here and pick whatever, and it just puts a tinted layer on top of this. Uh, we're not going to do that. That's not what this is about, but you could. You could also set it to be transparent. Right now, the alpha mode is set to opaque, but if I set this to blend, um, it's able to be transparent but it's not transparent yet but if i drop this down you'll see it becomes transparent so the transparency controls and stuff like that don't really work this is how you have to do it but anyway i don't want it to be transparent i want it to be solid so i'm going to go back that way um, alpha cutoff is in case you use mask instead um, okay let's focus on metallic roughness so the first one is the roughness factor we're going to do the bottom one first because that's where you get the real shine from. So right now it's set to one. I can drop this down, and as I drop it down, this becomes increasingly shiny and reflective. Not I, I, we have to choose our words carefully. I would say reflective, not necessarily shiny. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll start dropping that down, and you can see it become becoming increasingly shiny. It's sorry, reflective. It's reflecting more of the environment around it. You can see this is this is actually coming from somewhere. I don't know over here maybe. Actually, I think it's coming from behind it, which is kind of weird. Uh, the more you drop it down, the more it becomes, until it becomes very, very mirror-like. 
by the time you get to zero, it is, it's very shiny. So now it actually looks like what you would expect Chrome to look like, right? Oh, by the way, I have a, what do they call it? Uh, ref reflection probe uh, in this area. So we're inside of one. It's You can't see it because they're invisible unless you turn it on, but you can see the effect of it, that circle. That's showing that I'm inside of this reflection probe, which makes it look better. Uh, I'll do a video about that to talk about that too. But anyway, there you go. So now it's highly polished, highly reflective chrome, uh, like a mirror. So if you notice it's not reflecting us, there's reasons why. And sometimes you can see us, sometimes you can't. It depends on the settings and you have to adjust some stuff in the reflection probe. You have to set it to dynamic and there's all kinds of things um, that affect that. But sometimes you'll see us in the reflection, sometimes you won't. Uh, they're working on making it mirror. This is not intended to be mirrors. That requires a lot more resources and so they're working on that. But anyway, other than avatars, it reflects everything and it reflects it really well. Um, but that's all you do. So you just edit. And then adjust the reflect. So if that's too shiny for you, you don't want it to be quite so shiny, you can just put this up some more. Let's go to halfway and see what it looks like. You can also put a number in here. So there are 0.5. So there it is. Kind of halfway. All right. So that's uh, the roughness setting. Let's look at the metallic setting. So let's go back up to 1. Right, and let's start adjusting this metallic factor. So right now the metallic is set to one and we'll drop it down until it no longer looks like metal. Now it looks kind of like it does today in Second Life. When you, when you create metal in Second Life, it's just this kind of gray texture, right? There's no real metallicness to it. So this gives you that metallic and you, you have the ability to adjust this from none all the way up to the maximum of one. So if you think one is 100%, zero is 0%, everything in between is something else. So there you go. So that's metallic, uh, which gives you the, the metal nature of it, which is highly reflective, but but still looks like metal. But it's not it's not polished metal. You can think of it that way. Think of it as it's just metal. It's not polished metal. And then the roughness factor, because it's got a really rough texture right now, so it's uh, the light breaks up. It doesn't reflect back, right? Um, and if I want this to become highly polished, I polish it by reducing the roughness. Does that make sense? I'm trying to teach you some ways of thinking about it, right? So the more rough it is, the less reflective it is because that surface is, is rough, right? So we want our shiny, shiny, polished surface. By polishing it, we reduce the roughness and it becomes more and more reflective until it's completely reflective. And so that's why when I when I when you get the material, it may be set that way, it may not be set that way. So I didn't I didn't want to set it that way by default. So mine come out with it set to one, and you have the ability to adjust it. So that's the blue chrome. Let's try another one just so you can see. Let's put the uh, let's put gold on here. So this is the gold. This is the way it looks by default. And again, we'll go in and edit that, and you can see. Both metallic factor and the roughness factor are set to one, and it looks like this. So this is, would be a non-polished gold. But if you want to have highly polished gold, you just lower the roughness factor down. And so the lower this number gets, the shinier, more reflective it, it appears until you get it all the way down to zero, which is the maximum. And... It looks like a gold bar or something like you, you know, buy a, oh, I'm not going to buy a gold bar. <laughs> I wish I could buy a gold bar. Anyway, that's that. Let's put it back up to one. So I like it in between. Like that. That's kind of cool. All right. Kind of the best of both worlds. And so... The, I don't know if you can see the see all the, the little dimples and stuff here. Those are that's the roughness. The more I lower this down, those kind of maybe it's not the roughness. Maybe that's I don't know what it is. Could be the normal, I guess. It's probably in the normal. 
Um, anyway. I don't know what I was going to say. This is the way it comes, by default. So you're always able to adjust these. And so uh, let's talk a little bit about a, like a cube, though. I'm going to delete this one. Let's do a cube. There's one thing I noticed might be confusing. When you edit it, let's go ahead and put the bronze. When I drag it on, it only drops it on the one face, right? So if I put it on the other faces, why didn't it do it? There it goes. Okay. Now, if I want to edit this and change it to be really shiny, and I go to PBR Metallic, notice the edit button's grayed out. I can't do that. It won't let me do it because I have to select an individual face. You have to do them one at a time. So if I do like this, I don't know what happens. Yeah, okay, you can do a multiple that way, but you have to individually select it, which is weird, right? Because right here, they're, in, they're, they're all selected, but it won't let me edit it. You have to manually select one, then you can select the rest of them. And then you can edit it. So that was what I wanted to show you. It's not broken, that's just the way it works. But again, if you want to lower that down, let's go ahead and just set it to zero. Now you have highly polished bronze. All right, that's all this video was about. So I hope that uh, helps you understand how to use it better. If you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to me and uh, tell me what you want me to do videos on and I'll get them done. We will talk to you guys later.